and I hope I don't have sound. I'm going to pull it real close. We're live. Good evening. Happy Monday. And we are so excited to be here tonight with Mary Kay Andrews talking about the Santa suit. Welcome, Mary Kay. Hi, ladies. It's great to be with you. Happy, Thank happy you. Mary, Mary. <laughs> and joining me is my lovely co-host, Lisa from Atlanta. So wearing her uh, wonderful... <laughs> <laughs> my my reindeer ears are larger than my screen. Like literally, I have to sit all the way. Back. Yeah, you're gonna you have to pull way back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny! But they are very festive and and in keeping with the Santa suit, I think. So, welcome everybody. We are um, again talking about the Santa suit tonight with Mary Kay, and I want to give her a quick introduction tonight. And my apologies, trying to get everything in order here. But we are talking about the Santa suit with Mary Kay Andrews. And Mary Kay has penned more than 28 novels. She's a native of St. Petersburg, Florida, and earned a bachelor's in journalism from the University of Georgia. A former journalist at newspapers, including the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, she made the leap to fiction in 1991 and has created realistic, memorable characters for dozens of novels and has, might I add, just the best character names. <laughs> in 2006, Always. I know, right? In 2006, Hissy Fit became her first New York Times bestseller, followed by 12 more New York Times, USA Today, and Publishers Weekly bestsellers, which I think maybe now is more than 12. To date, her novels have been published in German, Italian, Polish, Slovenian, Hungarian, Dutch, Czech, and Japanese in whatever language. We know her best as one of the Fab Four, founder and co-host of our treasured Friends in Fiction. Welcome, Mary Kay. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Lisa. So good to be with you. It is. So I, always excited. Look, I always look so forward to our book club nights because we have so many wonderful readers and they have been really buzzing about this book. I will oh, tell I you. On, I love that. On the right, book club Lisa. page. Yeah. And on the main page. So we've had all kinds of descriptions from uh, fun loving to nostalgic to spunky to my favorite, having all the feels. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, putting you in the holiday spirit. Yes, absolutely. So we wanted to talk to Mary Kay a little bit about the, the details about the book. But first, would you mind giving those who may be joining us tonight who haven't read it a summary of the book? I will, but if you haven't read it, what are you waiting on? I know. I know. <laughs> um, the Santa suit is about a young woman. Her name is Ivy Perkins. She has just come through a bruising divorce. She's been living in Atlanta. And after the divorce is final, she decides she needs a complete do-over. Meaning she feels she, ha she need something moves her and she decides she needs to start over in a new town in a new state but in an old house and she gets the idea that she needs to live in an old white farmhouse so she goes online as one does and finds an old white farmhouse in a town fictional town of Tarbiton, North Carolina and she moves there with her dog pumpkin um, arrives the week before Christmas and the house she's never been in it she's just bought it sight unseen and when she gets there, there's a strange man standing in the driveway and he introduces himself as Ezra, her real estate agent. And of course, Ivy had not met her real estate agent since everything was done online. And she assumed someone named Ezra was in his eighties and wore a sweater vest and a bow tie. But this is not that Ezra, this is hot Ezra. And Ezra- <laughs> Lisa likes Ezra. Yeah, Woo. we'll get into that uh, later. <laughs> he, he takes her through the house and, and she knew that she was buying it from an estate. What she didn't know was that they were leaving it furnished. The heirs were leaving it furnished. So it's full of old lady furniture and she wants no part of that. And she goes into the bedroom and she's gonna load in her clothing into the closet. And of course it's full of old lady clothes and she starts removing them. She's gonna give everything away to charity. That's her plan. And on the top shelf of the closet, she finds a, an old, uh, a vintage box wrapped in Christmas paper. 
And when she takes it down and lifts the lid, she finds a vintage Christmas suit. Santa, it's a Santa Claus suit. It's beautifully made, it's red velvet. And Ezra explains to her that that must be Santa Bob's Santa suit and that he and his wife, Betty Ray, um, for 40 years were Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus for this mountain community. So every year they put on their Santa suit and Mrs. Santa Claus outfit. They were in the Christmas parade. They went to the children's home. Um, and Santa Bob talked to children at the, at the local uh, department store. And every year at Christmas, their house was the Christmas house. So they lit it up with thousands of lights and people came from all around to see and to get the holiday feels for Christmas. And um, he looks at Ivy and says, I am assuming you'll continue that. And she says, absolutely not. Christmas is not a happy time um, in, her, in her memory. It's not, she just wants to get through Christmas this year. She just wants to ignore it. But, um, you know, sometimes Christmas has other plans. Um, that night she goes to put the Santa suit back in the box. She plans to give it away to charity with all the furniture in the house. And she finds a note in the pocket of the jacket. And the note says, dear Santa, um, my mommy is sad all the time. All I want for Christmas is for you to bring my daddy home from the war. Signed, your friend, Carlette. And of course, Ivy is immediately intrigued. Who was Carlette? Um, did her daddy come home from the war? And why did Santa, out of all the thousands of notes he must have gotten over the years, why did Santa keep that particular note? And so sort of uh, unwittingly and unwillingly, she gets intrigued and she starts trying to find the answers to these questions. And when she does that, she finds herself becoming a part of the community, making friends. And um, she finds herself gradually um, succumbing to the magic of Christmas. I have to say that I absolutely loved this book so much. Oh, um, oh, I know too. that the saying goes, summer begins with MKA, but now it's the holiday season begins with MKA oh. because you have spoiled us with this book. Oh, thank I you. think it is the perfect gift. I bought it for, well, I saw you and you signed it for, well. I you must have bought, I don't even know how many copies you bought, Lisa. <laughs> I'm giving it spoiler a gift for her. <laughs> spoiler for recipients of her gifts. <laughs> I know. I was like, I won't say who, but thank you for signing the gift. Um, everyone, there's just been so much buzz on the page about it. And we have some great comments for you that I just want to share. Asa says it's the first Christmas book for her this season. Aww. Susie said, this is my favorite holiday book of all time. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Susie. And Marilyn says, I love the Santa suit. It was so sweet. And every, I mean, every, oh, Cheryl says it would make a great Hallmark movie. We think so too. Yeah, yes, we think so would too. Indeed. And um, there's just so much. Thank you for doing this. We know that two books in a year had to be oh stressful goodness. for you, but it is such a reward for us as readers because it's just been delightful. So I wanted to thank you for thank that. You. Well, you know, I needed as much as you all did. Oh, you know, and last, last fall, as you'll remember, was a dark time. Um, book tours had been canceled and um, I turned in because there was no book tour. I handed in this past summer's book, The Newcomer, early handed it in in October for the first time in my career on time early wow. even yeah <laughs> and so you know the four of us the five of us were down on Tybee we were doing a friends in fiction um retreat and um and Meg was there and somebody said well I think we should write a we should do a Christmas anthology each of us write a short story and I said absolutely not I'm not good at short stories not doing that <laughs> I have another novel I have to start immediately not doing it <laughs> But on the drive home to Atlanta, I started thinking. And, uh, you know, it was something to wake up to every morning. So every morning at six or seven, I would wake up, grab my laptop and start working on the Santa suit. And it really, it was a, it was a great 
um, diversion for me. It gave me something to look forward to. And I, I sort of thought about putting myself in this little snow globe world, you know, because I was writing in the dark, but my laptop is lit up and I was writing in bed, by the way. <laughs> and so Aww. I put myself in this little snow globe world. It had to be North Carolina because they have snow up there when we don't have that much snow down here in Atlanta at Christmas. And I just wanted to put myself in that world where people were kind and there was compassion and there was empathy and some romance. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted <laughs> to, so I, you know, and I thought about my laptop being that little snow globe. So I was in it and I thought about, I really thought about, I, I want my readers to come in here with me and join me in this world. And so it was, it was as much something for me to do um, as a distraction from the darkness as it was, but I was so happy to be able to do it and surprise readers with this bonus book. Well, it was definitely a bonus and we thank you so much. And now we're, like I said, we're spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I know Mary Kay is like, well, don't expect that every year, right? Well, <laughs> we have more questions. But you know that it's so funny because that description is just so perfect because it kind of make it gives you that whole uh, warm in a little world feeling. And that's exactly, that's exactly how the book feels. Thank yeah. You. So, so exciting that it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. Well, we had um, some advanced questions, Mary Kay, and, about the Santa suit. And we are also going to be taking questions from the chat. And so if you have a question for Mary Kay Live, go ahead and kind of be thinking about it and putting it in the chat while we get through a couple of other things. And we and will also do our best. spoiler free, sorry, oh, spoiler yes. free questions after 730. Spoiler free questions until 730. Oh, right. <laughs> no spoilers <laughs> before 730. <730. laughs> oh, got it. However it works, we won't tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> until yeah. after 7 30. nobody well, dies i'll tell you that <laughs> right well one of our um book club members asked and i don't have the person's name but what inspired the idea of the santa suit and all of the furniture and items left in the house well the santa suit the idea for it years ago you know if you know me or you follow me on social media, you know, I'm a hoarder and a junker and an antiquer. And I love vintage Christmas of every kind. Never a hoarder. <laughs> Not a hoarder. <laughs> so years ago, I bought a Santa suit at an estate sale. And I kept it around. My husband refused to wear it. Eventually, I sold it at a yard sale. But I kept thinking and wishing, I wish I had kept that Santa suit. And I kept thinking about all the stories that that Santa suit could have told. And um, what was the other part of the question? Oh, all of the furniture and items left in the oh, house. Oh, I, you know, the furniture just was the kind of furniture I see when I go to estate sales. So it's furniture of a typical era. Um, so Bob and Betty Ray were in there probably their 80s when they passed away. And so their furniture is probably 40s and 50s era. Um, and of course, the attic was full of all the kinds of stuff I love, which is old, shiny, bright, <laughs> Christmas tree ornaments and I think I put an aluminum tree up there um and so I I put <laughs> I put up in the attic everything I wanted for myself I, I kept the except the mice I don't like mice <laughs> no that's mice then. Takes, yeah that's what takes that's what takes Ivy up in the into the attic she hears mice and she decides to be brave and go up there and I don't know scare the mice away that that's was so brave <laughs> oh, I know. I love Brave, too. And, you know, at, this was pretty special to me, too, because I was reading the Santa suit and my daughter closed on her house this past Tuesday. And lo and behold, there is an attic. Oh, and lo and behold, they, yes, they did not clean out the attic. So she's starting to pull out things that I'm imagining, you know, would have been at Four Roses right. Farm. You know, she's pulling down the old, there's a, a vintage uh, cane bottom chair and there's oh. a vintage heater and I'm not, there is no telling what else is up there. We have I hope she finds something good. <laughs> we have not unearthed everything yet, but it was just so such a funny coincidence that I thought I, I could that. 
easily imagine this happening at Four Roses Farm yep. when Ivy takes, you know, her, those steps up that creaky attic steps. <laughs> and, you know, we've always owned old houses. And so we've, we found lots of stuff in the attics of our old houses. Oh, yes. There's actually on, on my daughter's um, property, there's actually a sort of a dilapidated other storage area so that one hasn't well there's no telling what's in there but that's a whole nother story <laughs> um, maybe it's a chicken gonna... coop <laughs> it could yeah, be the chicken coop <laughs> yes uh, well i'll mention that to her and see how that how that goes over lisa we probably have some things in the chat already um i have one more question would you like to go with a with a live question or shall i proceed um, you go ahead and I, I have a couple, so okay. I'll fire a few off after you. Well, this is kind of a starter question because of course, Ivy is our main character and she's so, she's so warm and likable. And I must say my favorite is Pumpkin because <laughs> I just love that name. But Sylvia Siegel wants to know, did you pick the main character Ivy from someone you know? And she comments when she finds the, the Four Roses farm to be much labor, she has the determination to stay, roll up her sleeves and work in spite of major obstacles. I thought you might have based her on someone you've seen in a similar situation. Well, I will share with you that Ivy is named after our English setter, Ivy. <laughs> and That's so awesome. if you follow me on Instagram or, or Facebook, you can see photos. I think I posted the other day a photo of Ivy last year. I put her in a Christmas sweater and she was giving me the side eye. So all of our dogs, <laughs> we have three setters currently and uh, all of our dogs have been either named for characters in books or um, I name characters in books after them. So Ivy was the only dog that didn't have a character named for her. So I felt... Um, <laughs> Felt that it was the right thing to do so she didn't feel left out and no I, I think I think um, Ivy is a lot like so many women I know who when um, the chips are down they just put their head down and they just charge ahead even though they don't have any they don't know what the hell they're doing <laughs> I mean Ivy decides she's going to keep chickens she doesn't know anything about chickens <laughs> And I, I, I will tell you, I can totally see myself doing that. Yeah, let's get some chickens. Let's let's raise chickens. Why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah, put that coop out back. <laughs> <laughs> My next door neighbors here in, in Atlanta used to have, when I started writing it, they hadn't sold their house at that time. They had chickens. Oh, My yes. grandkids love to go over there and play with the chickens. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I could just see too, and I don't know, um, this wasn't in the question, but a lot of the um, the attic scenes and all of that, I could just see come from your years of, you know, as we said earlier, you know, looking through the, the estate sales and the, and the yard sales and all that, because you have found some just amazing finds just from, just from what I've seen at Coquina Cottage from your, yeah, from yeah. your. Um, I love, so. yeah, attics and basements are the best. Um, basements <laughs> in Atlanta tend to be moldy. Oh, and um, pro chill. Be fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree <laughs> with that statement, hundred <laughs> percent. And uh, now attics, um, not 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 usually mold, but you know other issues. So, um, but that's where the good stuff is. That's where people put things that they thought, oh, we'll never need that again. I don't want that again, but I can't throw it away. Yeah. And so that's kind of where I like to, I like to dig. Oh, awesome. Lisa, do you have something from the chat? Yes. And this question is, I want to know this so much too. Carrie says, is the candy in the book based on real candy you can buy? I really want to try some. <laughs> Me to too. Up. You know what? Next year, when the Santa suit comes out in paperback, because you know a book comes out in hardback, and usually a year later it comes out in paperback. So maybe by next year, when the Santa suit comes out in paperback, I will have figured out a recipe for a peppermint fudge that has a little bit of pepper in it. Not Ooh, too much, gosh. but just enough. 
Um, so I can't believe how many people have asked me that. And it's really interesting. And I, I was like drooling it. when I was reading this book I too. I'm like, I want that. It. I only thought about it because I have a pumpkin pie recipe in my cookbook and it calls for putting black pepper in the pumpkin pie filling, which I never would. I'm not a big pepper fan, but yeah. it somehow enhances the other, the other spices. So I, I will have to, maybe I'll talk to a um, professional candy maker and see if I can figure that out. Oh, yes, well, please. I would be happy to volunteer. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to take, you're going to make some test recipes for me, Brenda. Oh, I was just thinking of being the taste. Tester. Oh, the taster. Yeah. You don't want to be the, the tester. You don't want to test the recipes. No, but yeah, I I'll be, be a happy. taste tester too. <laughs> You know, that's given me a great idea. I think I will reach out and find a candy maker and see if they will help me develop peppery mints. Peppery Yay. mints. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Yay, I know. And then I will say we had another um, another reader, Renee Annis, I hope I said that correctly, Anise, asks um, about the butterscotch caramel chocolate dump cake. I'll take a <laughs> slice, she said. Yes, is that a real recipe? No, oh, I tried to come up with the gooeyest, uh, uh, with the gooeyest uh, kind of cake. And I actually love chocolate, sea salt, caramel, anything. Me too. Okay, we could That's party my together. Favorite. I know. I got excited. Okay, so we got another thing for you to work on before the paperback. <laughs> I know. I, sea salt and chocolate and 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 caramel butterscotch are all. Those are my those are my flavor, my flavor. Yum. Oh yeah, and I like the dump cakes. Oh my goodness. Brenda's a dessert person. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 Brenda. Can you tell? <laughs> I I have got. A bad sweet tooth. Oh, I do too. I do too. You know, I did a um, a virtual event with Brenda Novak earlier today, and they said, "Would you make an easy Christmas dessert?" So I made um, the trifle out of my Beach House cookbook, and I made it. I didn't make it in a big trifle bowl like you usually do. You know, I made it in mm -hmm. like um, these really beautiful um, kind of cocktail glasses that I was given. And so they're down in the fridge. I'm not having a, I'm not having dinner. I'm having dessert tonight. I know oh, now I want dessert. Too. I know, right? What a great idea. <laughs> this is oh, not man. helping my, this is not helping my willpower at no, all. No, it's like, done. Apparently I have no willpower, so. <laughs> I have another question from the chat. Meredith, well, I wanna say like, you always have the best names in all of your books. Like they're always so unique. Um, her question is, where do the names come from? Especially Ezra and Carlette, very unique. Well, Carlette, I was looking for a distinctively Southern sounding name. And I, when I was very young, um, my family knew a family in our neighborhood. And actually the woman had gone to high school with my mom. And her name was Carlene. And I, mm -hmm. for some reason, I decided instead of being Carlene, she could be Carlette. And Ezra, I was looking specifically for, for a reason that we don't want to go into too much tonight because of a spoiler possibility. I was looking for a name that sounded like what started with an E. And I wanted it to sound like it was an old man's name. I'm always fascinated with you know, names tell us about the time when someone was born and when they were mm -hmm. named. It tells about who their yeah. family is. It tells us about, you know, where they're from. Um, like my daughter, Katie, her, her given name is Mary Kathleen. Well, she went to Catholic high school. In her freshman year, there were eight other Katies because it was a Catholic high school and there were a lot of ethnic Irish Catholics, apparently, that were Kathleen's. Oh. Or Catherine's. So everybody was Katie K or Katie T or Kate or <laughs> but and so I'm always fascinated. I'm I, I like I really like collecting names and I have a name, a really distinctive name for a character in um, next summer's book. Ooh, awesome. Well we'll look forward to hearing more about that. 
a little later. I will tell you, Ezra, um, it, that it, the name just completely conjured up the exactly what you wanted, the old, you know, gray yeah. hair uh, real estate agent that she, and so she was so surprised. I love that name. And Brenda in the chat says Laverne and Shirley are her favorites. And I have to say the same oh, Laverne, the Shirley, yeah. Thelma and Louise for the chickens. That was, that oh, was yeah. awesome. So, you know, I loved it. I was like, that is awesome. You know, my son works on a quail plantation and uh, in South Georgia, Southwest Georgia. And they, on these quail plantations, they hunt for quail old school, meaning, meaning on horseback oh, and on God. wagons pulled by teams of mules, matched mules. And so at his previous, the previous plantation he worked, he got to name the, the two teams of mules. And so he's like, I need names. And I, 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 think, I think one pair did get named either Laverne and Shirley or Thelma and Louise and uh, Ricky, and, I mean, <laughs> Lucy and Ethel, I don't know. <laughs> Obviously I like naming things. I name everything. <laughs> that's well, that, why your names are always the best I look forward to reading character names in your book I know right it's so good well we I, I was just looking at the clock we have a few more minutes until we allow spoilers so I'm not going to ask this next question that I have until we get to spoilers okay. do we have something else in the chat Lisa yes one, well, that one has a spoiler. Um, Anissa made a comment that she's going to door dash us some dessert. So I'm going to hold you <laughs> to that, Anissa. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm expecting someone to knock on my door. Chocolate, <laughs> Anissa. Chocolate, sea salt, caramel, preferably. <laughs> I, Leslie says that she'd love for you to do a companion cookbook booklet for the Santa Seuss. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Well, That's I don't know if I'll idea. have time. I don't know if I'll have time to do a, a booklet, but honestly, I am going to talk to my publisher about can we put we're used to put recipes in the back of the books. Um, for instance, if you've read my first Christmas no novella it was called Blue Christmas, mm -hmm. and there are recipes in the back of that. So um maybe I will um see if we can do that for the paperback of Santa Suit. That would be fun. That would be fun. Thanks, did, Leslie, for the suggestion. And did you say, Mary Kay, was that Blue Christmas? Yeah, Blue Christmas. And it's actually, okay. with a book, it was a BookBub. It was on sale on BookBub on Amazon and Apple Books for $1.99, the ebook version. So, you yeah. know, if you haven't, uh, if I think it's still on. If you haven't. Um, it is. Yeah, uh -huh. yep. check that out. I I checked it today because we wanted to make sure we mentioned that because yeah. um, that's one I've read and I really, really enjoyed the whole, I mean, Wheezy is just the best character <laughs> and I know we're veering off subject a little bit, but if you haven't read Blue Christmas, now's your chance to snag it. Well, that's, and you know, that's where I learned how to write a Christmas novella. My, my, um, my agent called me, my daughter, Katie was getting married and 16 years ago. And um, my age, I said, I have to pay for this wedding. And my agent said, well, I'm, you're, I have an idea, write a Christmas novella set in Savannah. And, um, and so that's, you know, that's where that idea came from. And my, I had no idea how to write one. And my editor, I called her up and she said, well, here's what you do. You, you and, oh, they wanted it set in Savannah. They wanted Wheezy and Bebe. And she said, um, you want characters who already know each other. And you want a really a compact time period. You can't have years and years and years in a in a Christmas novella. So I sort of took that to heart. Well, it's interesting that you say that because now that I think about it, this the Santa suit is in a pretty short span oh, yeah. of, of yeah, time. And a of lot course, of stuff has to happen. Yeah, <laughs> and and it does. But I but it's so effortless seeming that you don't realize that that's intentional you know as a reader you know you don't realize it <clears throat> I did want to clarify one thing we had a couple of questions about blue Christmas can it be read as a standalone it can it it's it's okay. a it's the third of a four-part series but it can totally be read on its own okay Perfect. it's just a sweet funny Christmas book it's got Elvis 
Well, there you go. That's <laughs> we what's what's Christmas without Elvis? I love his blue Christmas version. Me too. One of my favorites. <laughs> okay, Ma Maureen has a question. I love the character of Mr. Jones and the special relationship Ivy developed with him. Did anyone in particular inspire this character? Not really. I just, you know, I grew up in St. Petersburg, Florida, which is, you know, the home office of retirees for many years. And when I was a kid, <laughs> they, you know, people used to refer to St. Pete as the, as the home of the newlywed and the nearly dead. But, oh I, you know, I had um, my grandfather, my grandparents, I went to their house every Sunday for dinner. And um, I just have an affinity for um, older people like me now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no way. Um, I don't know. As soon as I started writing about Lawrence, I knew who he was. I knew that he was fastidious and I knew that he had a little candy jar of sweets. And I knew that... Um, I knew that his neighbors were kind to him, but he was, he was lonely. And, um, and I knew that he would, when he saw pumpkin, that he would, he would let pump pumpkin into his house and into his heart actually. Well, and I love the idea of the found family that she has yeah. with, right. with him and uh, not even realizing, let's see, is it at 732? So I Okay, let's, we're going to give the spoiler warning now. So yes, spoiler from alert. this point forward, we'll be discussing, we'll do more of a deep dive. So, so not spoiler even alert. realizing how much she would really have, how, how's this for being bailed, how much she would really have in common with him in her relationship with Ezra. So I'll, I'll hold it at that. And when but I started have, writing it, I, I didn't know the connection, honestly. Really? I was curious wow. about that. That's amazing. That, I'm just I sitting love, here thinking about that. That's so wow. cool because it just, it fits so perfectly. It seemed like that was like that to me when I read it, I thought I was like, as soon as I got to that point, I was like, that Mary Kay is so brilliant. Like it was like, oh my God. <laughs> Not that brilliant. I didn't At try all. to figure, I didn't see it coming. I didn't, and I was just like, oh, that's so good. And then you know, to know that that's not how it started. That just. No, it started so with cool. a note in the jacket of the Santa suit and Ezra was there and I couldn't, I, I was, you know, casting around trying to figure out what that connection could be. And, um, wow. and, well, you know, I, and so once I knew it, I had to be careful so that I would say, he was, he, whenever he referred to his broker, he just referred to her, to her as his broker. He yeah. never said, you know, that his broker was related to him or what his broker's name was or any of that. He just, that he had a connection. There was a family connection to the community. Mm -hmm. That was a twist that I don't think anybody saw coming. So I just, I loved that. Um, and I loved, I loved Lawrence's character too. You know, his, how you know who I, thought of him as? I thought of him as the uh, character um, from the holiday. Uh, oh. um, I can't think the actor's name. Uh, he's passed away since then. I can't think of his name either, but I know who you're talking about. I didn't, I don't know. I, I couldn't think of an actor when I was reading it, but that's, I totally see that. I think that I now. was that's hearing perfect. his, I was think I was channeling, oh my gosh, now you guys, we have to think, somebody, somebody um, Google <laughs> the uh, old man in um, the holiday. Anissa, Google the old man in, <laughs> so I in the chat. Have, I've watched that movie a million times. <laughs> the old man in the holiday on IMDb. Someone I know we're going to get chat. something momentarily. Yeah. And I just love that. I mean, he was so, that actor was so kind and so open, open mm -hmm. to new friendships and open to new ideas. And, um, and I like that about, about Lawrence. Eli Wallach. Eli Wallach, of course. Thank you, Sarah, Barbara, and Karen for being Thank on you, this ladies. So, so quickly. <laughs> yes, thank you. 
our readers are the best. They are. <laughs> they, they truly well, you know, are. Whenever, I think, I, I mean, I don't think I really, at the time, I, I think I just was channeling that. I don't think I was thinking, oh, I'm stealing this character from the holiday. I just, I, I just was channeling his kindness and his openness yeah. to friendship. That's a perfect, um, that's a perfect connection. Like I totally see that. That's, that's awesome. While we're talking about characters and films, let's circle back to hot Ezra, shall we? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's gonna take a moment and see. Who do you have in mind to play hot Ezra? You and know, since he... your fake boyfriend is sexiest <laughs> man alive, it can't be him. No, it can't be Paul Rudd. It's not Paul Rudd. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Um, you know, my go-to hot guy is Hugh Jackman. Uh, but uh, I love Hugh Jackman. I love Hugh Jackman. Um, hmm. I just <laughs> Marlene says Matthew McConaughey. No surprise there. That's no. We call her Mrs. M. With Marlene, Marlene. yes. <laughs> I don't see Matthew McConaughey. I, I, um, I don't know. I just don't ever use, I mean, the only, literally the only person I thought of when I was, and I didn't even, I didn't even realize it at the time until afterwards. I thought, oh, you were channeling Eli Wallach from the holiday. Hmm. Which I is another agree. interesting E name that yeah. has some age to it, the Eli. Yeah. And Chad I had a Michael Murray. Name. Chad Michael Murray came to mind for me when I was oh. reading it later on, but he's, I don't know if he could pull <laughs> it off. young and callow. <laughs> yeah. I, love the, uh, I love Mary Alice's sort of grimace. I know. <laughs> <laughs> then I thought of Idris Elba, which is nothing like what you described, but I no, think Idris, whenever I, I, I mean, Idris think Elba, hot guy. He's hot. But he would stand right. out in that. It is always <laughs> going to whenever stand. I think of a hot guy. That's just my own personal issue. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree, with you all the way. I agree with you all the way, but I think he would stand out in that small town. <laughs> y'all are too funny. <laughs> We're getting, getting a lot of a British accent. <laughs> We're getting a lot of hearts in the chat. Oh, <laughs> and a lot of, just, oh, Maybe we just need to money. make like a top 10 F and F hot guy list. Oh, so we've got George Clooney, Patrick Dempsey, Colin Egglesfield. Oh, he might be a good one. Blake Shelton. A couple of people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, speaking of speaking of hot Ezra, um, <laughs> <laughs> one of um, our spoiler questions is. Well, this is not exactly a spoiler, but you probably are going to have to discuss what happens with them. But Anissa would like to know, do you think you would write another book with Ivy and Ezra to follow their relationship farther? Well, I don't think I'd write a book about Ivy and Ezra. I have an idea for another Christmas novella that would be start in that same town. Ooh. So maybe... If I do it, maybe Ivy and Ezra would have cameos. Nice. And would it happen to be Phoebe and Cody? Oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. even what happened with their relationship. That. Oh, I, so that means I, it's I not. It. <laughs> no, honestly, the idea that for the, the idea for this book is so is so just uh, new and so tiny. It's just like a paragraph. But that's where every every idea start with like a seed in the ground, and you have mm -hmm. to water it and look at it and put some heat on it and see what comes up. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Maybe pee on it to see to fertilize it. I don't know. <laughs> I. <laughs> oh Lord, that's so all funny. right. Pull yourself together, Lisa. <laughs> I know. I also loved Phoebe and Cody's relationship even though while you're reading it you don't know where it's going and I'm glad that you put a happy spin on like a catfish situation because most cat as so as someone who's dealing with online dating as a single lady catfishing sucks and online dating sucks so just seeing that and how it turned out I loved that so much I love well, you that. know 
I, and that I that came about because you know if you again if you follow me on social media, I get all these guys wanting to follow me on Instagram, and they I mean it, it's too stupid to even be catfishing because they're not bright yeah. enough to catfish. They're just they pretend itching. to be celebrities and stuff, and oh, they're yeah. like, Matthew Hi, McConaughey. You're yeah, beautiful. that's totally me. It, it's yeah. always it's always guys who don't know how to spell the name Michael. Oh, <laughs> kind of a yes. giveaway. A dead giveaway. If you don't know how to spell your own name in English, probably you are not a native right. speaker. And if you have yeah. the same first and last name, probably not. <laughs> right. And if you are a a uh, Air Force General Flight Surgeon Admiral, <laughs> kind and humble, loves Jesus. Caring heart, also fictional. Yeah, well, so I, I thought about well, I what, have. <laughs> what, I mean, you know, Phoebe is kind of young and naive, um, but so open and giving. And then I thought, well, what if she just found, you know, someone who wasn't? I mean, maybe he isn't what he she because she's not what she presents herself as either. Right. And so I just I like the idea of um, both of them coming to terms with being honest, and both of them truly falling for who they were, yeah. right unseen, which is also how Ivy was with. It's like a whole nother thing. Yeah, like, I didn't even think they about were sight that. unseen. That is true. I mean, didn't see the house when she bought it, and then they fell in love with who they really were. Their their person. I didn't even think about that. You're way deeper than me, Lisa. I love that. <laughs> well, it's either that or I've been catfished one day. <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna go there. No, not no, gonna go no, there. No. <laughs> but that's so true because there's so many things in this book that are diff that are not. The, like not not what they seem to be in a bad way but they turn out to be you know different like the four roses farm initially she thinks this is not what I expected but then it turns out to be this magical place yeah and it's like the the house has a personality and is responsible for some of the well, that and the Santa suit, of course. And the suit had the magical um, feel to it. I think that was one of our questions. And I apologize, it went by so fast. I don't remember who asked. But the question was, what? how did you come to have the suit fit Ivy perfectly when it wasn't, um, you know, the previous owner was not the same size? And it fit her perfectly too. So in the magic she felt when she put it on, what well, was the inspiration? I think, I think the magic of clothing can be if you have an item of clothing and you put it on and you feel like it's your superpower, you put on um, a dress. I used to have, gosh, 25 years ago, a short black cocktail dress. And it was low cut and it squeezed my girls together <laughs> and it had short sleeves. And when I put that, I only wore it at Christmas. I would wear it to Christmas parties. Oh. But when I put on that dress, I felt sexy and magical. And, you know, I could dance, which normally I'm not really a very graceful dancer. And so I think I was channeling the power of what some item of clothing can be that it can make you feel uh, that you take on some identity that you didn't have before and and so and i i was willing to i mean i don't write um magical realism but in this book i was willing to surrender to a little mm -hmm. bit of that because i think in a in a christmas book you have to do that Yes, there has to be I a little bit it. of magic. Yeah. It was so, yeah, it really was. There were there were several little wonderful touches of magic. So that was really cool. Lisa, do you have, um, did we have another question in the chat? Sorry for putting you. We have quite a few. 
I thought we Come might on. because we've been getting a lot of um, we've been getting a lot, a lot of, of hearts. And um, then we have a couple more suggestions for Ezra, Adrian <laughs> Grenier for okay. Ezra. That might not be bad. <laughs> and a lot of people sharing their love for the book. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of comments in here. There's well, so tell many. them all to tweet Hallmark. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's come up with a hashtag. What oh, we yeah, gonna... we need a hashtag. Um, Ron Block yeah. used the hashtag Punkin Perkins. He said hashtag <laughs> Punkin Perkins. <laughs> hashtag Hallmark makes, uh, let's see, ha hashtag Santa suit the movie now. I don't know. Let's do hashtag Santa suit movie now. Santa yes. suit movie ASAP. Yeah. That way, <laughs> Hallmark, we, if we put Hallmark, then it's only targeting. If we just take that out, it can go That's Hallmark, true. Lifetime, it could, be, it could be Lifetime, it could be Apple, we don't know. It could yes. be any GAC family, Up TV, which is here in Atlanta. I will go down there and I will I will go down there. Ooh. All right, hashtag Santa copy. suit. Someone in the chat said I should give one of my copies of the book I bought to a Hallmark producer. <laughs> Oh, well, I, next time you see the Hallmark producer. I'll just go down to Up TV. I can just go down to Up TV and give it to them. They do holiday movies. And there there you go. There you go. But I have to give up. I mean, somebody's not giving a gift. <laughs> we'll come back to that. I have a film so guys, agent. I, have a, I do have a film agent who's shopping it. So I don't want Lisa to have to give up her. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, guys. Hashtag Santa suit movie ASAP. Right. And then Lisa Instagram, will get a, Twitter. Lisa will get a cameo in the in the uh, in the <laughs> final scene at the at the Christmas stroll. That would be amazing. I could wear my reindeer. Oh, I think that's lovely. You could be the candy shop owner, Lisa. <gasps> oh my gosh, that would be awesome. That would be so fun. Yeah. I and you know what else that. is amazing about the Santa suit is I love the way that the candy shop, that Ivy um, creates that marketing campaign for the candy yes. shop. I thought that is just so awesome. Speaking of marketing, this leads to a question for me that I had for you. At the end, Ivy's friend Meg, who taught her how to make the happy waitress, was oh, that a I shout out to our very own Meg Walker? It was because Yay! years ago, Meg and I were in New York. Whenever I go to New York, usually Meg comes in. She lives in Jersey. She comes in and we go to see a Broadway show together and we have a little slumber party in my hotel room. And so, gosh, I don't know how many years ago um, she came, I went up to New York for the uh, Romance Writers of America conference, which was this huge big deal. And the best, and all the publishers gave great parties. And so Harlequin gave the, gave the greatest party of all, which is the black and white ball at the Waldorf Astoria ballroom. And nice. so you were supposed to dress in black or white. And um, Meg and I crashed it because I was not a Harlequin author, but we found a way to get in and it was so much fun. They would always bring in this great DJ from LA and they would play great music. And it would be like 500 women and 40 guys on the dance floor, just <laughs> rocking it out. They had a midnight chocolate buffet and oh my goodness, open bar, it was the <laughs> best party. So I don't know, we left there at like one in the morning and we were walking back to our hotel. And for some reason we decided we needed to eat. And so we ran down, I don't know, Fifth Avenue maybe. And we went to a diner and Meg introduced me to the concept of the hungry waitress. And so that, yes, that was an Easter egg shout out to Meg Walker. All right. I, Yay, Meg. So. <laughs> Yay, Meg. I, I asked Brent, I was like, I wonder if that's by Meg or if that's yes. like a shout out to Meg. That's and that our, was another thing I was drooling over and I had never heard of a happy waitress or happy waitress it? hungry wait yeah, yeah happy waitress yeah or something yeah that was so that was another recipe I was like ooh, that sounds good 
I know. See, the recipe, we keep coming back to the food. Okay, I well, I'm just going to have to ask my, my publisher <laughs> if we could do that for the paperback of uh, Santa Suit. Yes, that would be so cool. Oh, oh I can't it, believe it's already 751. Uh -oh. We have so many more. I know I was just thinking that and we want to give Mary Kay an opportunity to talk about her upcoming novel The Homewreckers but we, we we probably should make a few announcements first but we definitely want to hear about that so uh, I did want to tell everyone that um, this month is a book club double header not only are we honored to talk about the Santa suit tonight with Mary Kay but Christy Woodson Harvey will be here December 20th to talk about her Christmas novel, Christmas in Peachtree Bluff. So we we got two this month and a happy hour. So we we are uh, rocking rocking, rocking <laughs> the books this month. And Lisa is going to tell um, tell readers about our upcoming schedule for book club picks. Yes. In case you missed happy hour, we announced on Friday our book club picks for January, February, and March. So in January, on January 24th, we're going to do The Secret of Snow by Viola Shipman. And February 17th, we are going to do um, The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. And actually February, well, that's February 17th. We're going to have a special happy hour on February 4th with Ron Block and Nancy Johnson. Uh, and in March, I believe it's March 21st. We're doing the Soulmate Equation with Christina Lauren. Oh, great. So book. we've got a busy January, yeah. February, and March. And Jasmine um, is great. Nice. Nancy is great. And um, those all sound like great picks. We're and excited. Not, yes, we're very excited. But not to forget this Wednesday night on the main Friends in Fiction page, um, the Fab Four welcome Cynthia Dupree Sweeney as their guest. So be sure to it's tune be a in this great show. tonight too. Yeah. Yeah. So before you go, Mary Kay, we do want to ask you if you could give us a little bit of info about um, your new novel. I will. It's called the um, the Home Wreckers. It's about a woman. She is a contractor, and she works with her father in law in Savannah. Their specialty is restoring historic homes. And she gets cast in a television reality show for a mm. HGTV like network. And they challenge her to fix up a disaster of a house. And they pair her with an LA designer, heartthrob designer. So they tell her that, and that's the name of the show, The Home Wreckers. And it's sort of where um, Flipper Flop meets The Bachelor. <laughs> So good. <laughs> so good. So you guys can pre-order that one now. Yep, it's out May 3rd. Okay. And I just turned it in last Friday. Yay! Really? Woo! That fast. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You oh, are rocking it. So that means you have time now to start on the sequel to the Santa suit, right? As soon as I do the revisions <laughs> for home records, which are due. <laughs> next uh, Friday. So you're saying uh, chance. <laughs> yeah, I got my work cut out for me this week. Oh my goodness. Well, that sounds really fabulous. I know it's it's going to be wonderful because I'm thinking back to the the fixer upper and yes. how much fun that novel was and um, you know, with that kind of theme. So I'm really looking forward to that and our and eventually our book club chat about that. I I look forward to it too. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Mary Kay, for joining us this oh, evening to talk about friend. the Santa suit. I can't believe it's already time. I can't even. I know. Time it's for dessert, y'all. Uh, I know, right? Yes. We have a couple people in the chat saying that we have made them hungry and now they all want dessert. So, <laughs> <laughs> so get on it, Anissa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the DoorDash never came. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think that the Santa suit, I'm just going to reiterate what I said earlier, it makes a great gift. Thank you. Get out and buy it. If you, well, people watching now have read it. So get out and buy it for gifts. And I think this book is going to be a book that people will reread 
kind of to start the holiday season. I, um, I think it's, it's like a book that will be a tradition for some people. And I just, I want to thank you so much for that. Cause I, I typically don't read holiday books, but this one was my first one. And now, well, my first one this year, now I'm Cool. On the Christmas train. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, lady, so much for having me. Thank you to all the book club folks. Um, and happy holidays. And what's our hashtag again? Our hashtag, get out there and tweet. I'm going to post it right after this. Hashtag Santa Suit Movie ASAP. Or maybe you, we should do now. Yeah. Well, Santa whatever. Suit Movie Now. Let's do that. Hashtag okay. Santa Suit Movie if Now. We're going to add Lifetime and at Hallmark. We're going to add Lifetime. I'll put all the people yeah. on the app. <laughs> okay. Lifetime, Hallmark, Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. Right. BAC Family, Up TV. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Lisa, you might have to become a film agent. <laughs> I know, right? I put, I put, so it's hashtag Santa Suit Movie Now. I put it in the chat. We'll, yes, we'll elaborate yes. on that some more. And I'll do a follow-up to the, post. Forward to the We're country. starting a movement. <laughs> Tweet, Instagram, Facebook. Thank you, ladies. Happy Thank holidays. You so Thank much. you, Mary Kay. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. You See you Wednesday Enjoy night. It. See you Wednesday. Yes. Bye-bye. Yay. Oh, that was, that was so, so much fun. fun. I'm sorry oh, for my creaky chair. I did not get to share, and I, I guess I'll share for those who are still watching. My my doggy scarf is in honor of Pumpkin, and for the <laughs> Pumpkin and Perkins. the puppy <laughs> Pumpkin Perkins, <laughs> and of the puppy cards that Lawrence sent his granddaughter each year. So yeah, kind of I love to see that. The pups. But there they are. <laughs> it's so cute. I there's so many things. I feel I just I have to say I did not want to fangirl. But when Mary Kay said, and you can be in the movie or you can play the the candy shop owner, in my in my inner actor soul was doing every happy dance I mean, imaginable. Like, oh my god. Well, yeah, because that's you have some you have background in that in that, that area would be so, so that, cool that would be awesome i'm telling you we're starting a movement hashtag send a suit movie now <laughs> but, but reading it though even that aside i mean obviously that would be amazing for me but without that this would be such a great film like the whole time i was reading it i was like this would be the best movie it it's would. so much better than so many christmas movies that are already made. <laughs> It is. And you know what? It's so, she talked about it being a novella and it is, but there it's so um, complex and the way it comes together is just, you know, yeah. delightful. And um, so good. You can never go wrong with a Mary Kay Andrews novel. You just can't. You're going <laughs> to be entertained. The characters are going to be great. It's going to have her signature wit and charm mystery and some love and some she's just she's yep. the best uh, i think i might have to go back and reread it <laughs> it's so <laughs> because good i did not want it to end i didn't either and the cake oh my god anyone in the chat have you ever had a cake that sounded similar or tried something that was similar to what that cake it was like s'mores chocolate car I mean it just sounded like every delicious thing in one dessert <laughs> oh I know it did I'm kind of wondering if anybody's heard of it Marlene says Lisa and Brenda uh the book club members can be in the town stroll <laughs> yes <laughs> that would be cool to have all of the people in the town stroll like the people at the town stroll and at you know be Friends and fiction members. That would be such a cool idea. It would be. I'll volunteer to be in the candy shop. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> that would be so fun. <laughs> and then Hot Ezra. See who they cast as Hot Ezra. Oh, yeah. We, we'll have to go back and look in the chat because we can't always see everything because it kind of scrolls by pretty fast. But we'll, yeah. we'll go back and look at that, too. 
<laughs> well, we wanted, oh, Maria said lava cake is close. Ooh, I need to find um, some lava cake. I, I, I have to have something chocolate or I'm just going to be like dreaming about this cake for days. <laughs> that sounds good. Well, hopefully those recipes will be out in the paperback case here. Yeah. So at least we got, you know, we got that going. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, I guess we should close out for now, but thanks everybody for joining us. And I hope you enjoyed the Santa suit as much as I did. And we look forward to sharing Christmas and Peachtree Bluff in just two weeks. I can't believe it. I know. <laughs> Make sure you are reading that. And then I also want to say I'm doing a giveaway on my Instagram. It's Lisa Gets Lit. And it's for a signed High Tide Club by Mary Kay and one of the Ooh. cups. It's also the High Tide Club cup that she has. And I'll throw in some other swag in there. But it ends tonight. So if you haven't entered, you can go on there and enter. What and, time? Um, it's open until 3 a.m. Eastern time. So midnight Pacific Standard Time is when it closes. Okay. So it's still time to enter. So please do, because that's another great MKA novel. Yeah, yeah. it certainly is. Mm -hmm. Well, Lisa, you have a great evening and everybody. Me too. Happy holidays. Thanks for sticking and around, happy guys. Bye. Bye. -bye.